looking at you at first, but man, you can sing. I grew up in a church where singing was the big deal. It was always the most important part of the service um, because it was what prepared you to hear God's word. It set, set you in the, the right mind frame because you started by just giving, giving praise. So I want to thank you for, for pra praising God in that way, and um, I want to start you with a joke. As you all know, my jokes are notoriously horrible. So a little boy was sitting on his steps leading up into his house and eating a big box of Valentine's candy. He's furiously shoving every piece of chocolate into his mouth as fast as he can chew and can swallow. Can you see it? Some of us live like that. A man walked by and noticed this kid grabbing the candy into his mouth and he said, you know, eating all that candy is going to spoil your dinner. Have you ever said something like that to a kid? You ever started sounding like your parents? You didn't expect your mom's voice to come out of your mouth? The kid said, Wow, I didn't know that. But you know, my granddad lived to be 102. The man asked, perplexed, he said, Because he ate a lot of candy? And the kid answered, No, because he minded his own business. Move on! <laughs> shakes a lot? A nervous wreck. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I'm going to give this to our sermon right now. I hope I didn't shake you with that. Um, we want you to be unshaken. Let me pray for us as we begin. God, we thank you that you, you call us into a place of, of security, that you call us into a place where the foundation is strong and that can weather any storm. Lord, today, as, as we talk about fear, may your presence be so strong, may your light be so bright that fear not have a place in our heart in these next few moments. Amen? Amen. So again, we've just started a series, I mean, we're finishing up on a series called Untaken, and we've been talking about the big issues that occur in our lives, and how do you handle them? How do you handle uh, the story of the storms that come up? We've talked about worry, we've talked about anxiety, and today we're going to address fear. And today I'm even going to show you what fear looks like. Um, and my hope is that we're going to learn how to move from fear to faith, but that's only if you're, written, if you're really ready to trust God. Because the only way you're going to be able to move from fear to faith is by trusting God. Now I did a little research, and I found out that Fear of traveling is called photophobia. Everybody say that with me. Photophobia. So if you haven't learned anything at all today other than that babies like to dance, and fear of traveling is what's it called? Photophobia. Yeah, good. Um, every person in here, just quickly, off the top of your head, say out loud what's your biggest fear. One, two, three. Okay. Now your neighbor's going to use that against you right now, just so you know. We all have fears, they're, they're, and they're all very, very, very real. Um, for me, uh, fear is like an old friend. Um, sometimes like an old annoying friend. Sometimes like that old annoying friend that you want to take a hint that you don't want to be friends with them anymore, but they keep coming around. You have friends like that? Yeah. Don't point them out if they're sitting next to you. Right? That's not a good move. Okay? Fear is like an old friend that doesn't always catch the hint. And sometimes, some, why, some reason, we're so polite to fear that we say, no, you can stay. And I want to invite you this morning to say, I'm trusting in something other than my fears. So as you know, my wife and I are learning how to re-enjoy Southern California, and we had the opportunity this weekend to go to Disneyland. We actually went to California Adventure, and got to experience all the joys of California Adventure. And it's an absolutely fantastic park. The, the new Incredicoaster is absolutely incredible. It is amazing. That launch off the hill and the dip and oh my gosh, and you're screaming. That's why my voice seems a little bit hoarse because I was screaming my face off all morning long, all, all yesterday long. And there's an old friend of mine at, um, at California Adventure. It's called 
called the Tower of Terror. It's re been renamed, but it still holds the same amount of terror that it has always held in me. And uh, so I got to get on this ride again. I haven't ridden it since uh, probably 2009. And as we got on, I got to see some <laughs> professional riders of the Tower of Terror. These are the guys and gals that are in the front row of this ride. And when it's time to take a picture, they all know what to do. Okay? So you got that, that guy's like, yeah, sweet picture for me. You got this kid right there. He's kind of having an experience. But if you notice the girl in the back, she's like, this is the best. Right? Now, even little kids, I mean, when you get on a ride and there's like a five-year-old in front of you, you should know I have nothing to be afraid of, right? So look, you got that little kid. Come on, it's awesome. Yes. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Even the mom is like, yeah, yeah, picture color. It's like nothing's happening. Literally, like nothing is happening. <laughs> well, no big deal. No big deal. But there is, there is a big deal. Because they're babies. Now, the reason she has her hands over her mouth is because her husband is right next to her, grabbing her leg as hard as possible. Because I am terrified. You're going to see what my face looks like in terror in just a moment. This is our friend uh, Faith on the on the left, and Patty, the one with this big. Oh, this is a little worse than I thought. And then there's me. Okay, if you ever seen that face on me when I was pulling my head back and going, "I'm gonna smile," I am terrified. I'm about ready to cry. Turn the ride off. Have you ever been on a roller coaster or a ride where you just wanted to get off before it was done? Yeah, I've been there many times because. Fear is a constant, regular companion. Here's the full picture of everybody on the ride having a great time. And there's me right in the middle going, oh dear God, I'm going to die any second. <laughs> See, we all experience fear. It's daily. And as we, as we talk to people about their fears, these are the big ones that people have. One of the biggest fears in the world is public speaking, which I'm doing right now. I do have no problem with that. Falling. Falling from heights and spiders. If any of those apply to you, please raise your hand. Okay. What if your fear was this? Fear of while public speaking, tripping and falling out a window while being attacked by spiders. <laughs> that is an oddly specific fear. And, and if that's you, you're in trouble. See, the thing that's crazy about fear is that fear takes death grip on the control of your life. If, if you allow fear to be the steering and driving element of your life, it will run you into a brick wall every time. Because fear never makes the wise decision. We've seen every horror movie there is. You're running away from the bad guy. Don't hide in the room with all the chainsaws. Fear leads you to make the bad decision. God, in his wisdom, gives us guidance in the midst of our fear. He gives us guidance in the midst of our storm, and without any hesitation, he wants to make sure that you know who he is all the time. This is Psalm 121. This is a psalm written by a, 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 a party of folks that are traveling from one place to the city of Jerusalem. They are in transition, and when you're traveling back in those days, traveling was very risky. You could meet bandits, you could, come, you could have the storm that we just had come upon us this weekend, come upon us, anything could happen. And so the psalmist writes this question. He writes, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where is my help going to come from? He's like, we're in the middle of nowhere. We're supposed to be going to Jerusalem. There's no help coming anywhere. But he answers his own question. He says, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then he begins to remember the promises that God has for him as a traveler. He remembers the hope that God has for him. And he says this, He, meaning God, will not let your foot be moved. He's going to make sure every step you take is secure. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
Now remember, this is back in the time when there, there people believed in Egyptian gods and, and, and farming gods and all these different kinds of gods who took seasons off. They, they, they would take the winter off because I'm not a winter god, I'm a summer god. I look good in white, but winter gods don't look good. Anyway, so that's the kind of gods that they believed in. And so the psalmist is going, remember, our God doesn't ever take a nap. He's always available. He's always with you. He's always watching. He says, the Lord is your, say this word with me, keeper. You can translate that word also as guardian. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is, the, is your shade at your right hand, and the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. Think about that. If you're traveling a long distance, the sun is not your best friend, is it? Especially if it's hot. So God is like, is like the, the, the mother hen who's hiding and protecting people under the shelter of his wing. And, and there's no sunlight that's going to bother you. Now, the other side, as I read this passage, I was like, well, what do you need to be sheltered from the moon for? Well, this again is talking about the battle of the gods. Remember, there in the Egyptian world, you had Ra, that was called the sun god. And there was a moon god. So God is protecting them, the Hebrew god. Yahweh is protecting them from the, the Egyptian god. As well as people thought if you were exposed to moonlight too much, you might go crazy. Anybody here you want to point out that's been exposed to too much moonlight? There we go. Get some people. <laughs> good, good, good. Then he says this. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you from going out, and he will keep your coming in from this time on and forevermore. He keeps saying this word. There's this keep word that keeps popping up. And what's the other translation for that word? What do you say it was? Guardian or guard? The Lord will guard you from all evil. The Lord will guard your life. The Lord will guard your going out. And the Lord will guard your coming in from this time forever and ever and ever. God is traveling with you. I know for me, as a, as a man still figuring out his faith day by day, Sometimes it feels as if you leave God behind. Like I made a bad choice and I wandered far away from God. This psalmist says, nope, he is with you. He is guarding you. He is keeping you. Who keeps you? He says it in the first verse. The maker of heaven and earth. Who, who, what could be bigger than that? Am I afraid of the mountains? No, because I know the person that made the mountains. Am I afraid of the seas? No, because I know the person that poured the seas out. Am I afraid of any trouble in this world? No, because I know the person who spoke them into me. In Texas, they have this thing called the pamper pole. If you have a fear of heights, this is a dangerous, difficult task to do. It is basically just a telephone pole straight up. Most high ropes course have these things. And you climb up to the top of this telephone pole, which, by the way, when you get to the very top, shakes a little bit. Has anybody seen one of these before? Have you seen one of these? Raise your hand. Good, good, good. Has any of you, have any of you been on one of these? Raise your hand. Awesome. So what happens is you get all the way to the top of this pole, and then about seven feet away from you, which looks about three feet further than your feet can go, there's a trapeze bar that you're supposed to jump out to and catch. And if you jump far enough and high enough and strong enough, you'll catch that bar and you'll be great. But if you don't, what's going to happen? And then what happens? And then you don't. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what really happens is you got to remember what the instructor told you at the very beginning. Because while you're getting ready, you're putting your helmet on, you're putting, your, you're putting all your gear on, the instructor says, you know, this rope that you're being attached to can hold three elephants worth of weight. Three elephants. And he has you hold it and pull on it and tug on it. Three elephants. Do you trust the rope? Absolutely. Nothing bad's going to happen to you as long as you're connected to the rope. Rope. As long as you're connected to the rope. You trust the rope, it's going to be good. So you go up there, you're all the way up there, you're looking up there, and all of a sudden that bar feels like it's a mile away. And you'll feel the rope supporting you. And everybody down below is saying, jump, jump, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And all you hear is, you know, you see the curvature of the earth at that moment. <laughs> There's only one voice speaking into your ear. There's no like brave angels like, don't do it. You're just a chicken. Climb down now. Climb down. And eventually, if you're brave enough, you work up the courage to jump. 
of my son, my oldest son, Noah, had the opportunity to do a zip line. And this is the face of fear. The face of fear is saying that you can do this. You're strong enough. You can handle this. You're brave enough. You can handle this. And he sat on the top of this zip line tower for 45 minutes with everybody down below screaming encouragement to him. Come on! You can do it! You can do it! You can do it! And it wasn't until someone said, Remember the rope. You can trust the rope. You can trust the rope. It was us trusting the rope. I don't know if the person up there gave him a push or not, but there he is, zipping down the zip line. Church, the psalmist is screaming out to us. You can trust the rope. You can trust God. You, you can put your faith in God. Even when you're traveling, even when it seems difficult, even when there's storms, you can trust the rope because God is the maker of heaven and earth. He's stronger than this rope that can carry three elephants. And if he's stronger than that, he can carry you through whatever struggle, whatever worry, whatever problem that you might be facing. So our antidote to fear is found in God. And I want to encourage you to write these down. Write down these antidotes to fear. These are ways that you trust the rope. One, you, you, you remember God's presence. Because God's presence is in your life always. And so, so you do things that put yourself in God's presence. Through prayer. Through, through being in a community of faith. You, you, you hold on to the promises that God will be, be with you. The second thing you do. The antidote to... to uh, the antidote rope to beat fear. Huh? Trust God's word. You read God's word. You expose yourself to God's word. You find yourself daily in God's word. You trust God's vision. You remember how God sees your life playing out, and God can see more steps in front of you than you can see in front of you? You trust God's vision for your life. You trust what God says over you about your life. You trust God's forgiveness. So many of us struggle so much with thinking that, you know, the things that we've done, the pain that we've caused, the sin that's in our life, well, that separates us from God. But we forget that God has already said he's forgiven us. He's paid for that cost. He's paid for that separation through his son, Jesus. He gives us forgiveness. We can trust God's hand. God's hand is what, what is moving you, what is urging you, what is nudging you. Every time I got onto a ride at Disneyland, someone touched my elbow. And you know what? It was encouraging. Because I knew that there was someone there guiding me. Someone's hand was literally at work making sure I would sit on the cocoa tree appropriately. <laughs> we can trust God's ear. God hears us when we're struggling. God hears us when we're in pain. God hears us when we're just living in doubt. And when we're crying out in the storm, He's still there. We can trust God's strength. Because he's big enough and strong enough. He loves you so much that there's nothing he wouldn't do to rescue you. Trust the rope, church. Trust the rope. Pray with me. Great God, as we come before you this morning, we, we celebrate the ways that you have shown up in our lives and how you point us to the place where we can be unshaken. Father, we ask that we, we would be able to trust you and trust all the ways that you show up in our lives. And we, we want to express that trust by saying the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 